so there are two important controversial mcqs the first one is this one temperature increases above set point what will decrease now what is meant by set point let's suppose this is hypothalamus each and every person is having a specific set point like for example say the normal person is having set point of 98.6 fahrenheit so your body temperature is maintained at this set point now if your set point is increased now what does that mean if your set point let's suppose this is your setting point normal set point is this if due to certain infections or malignancies or toxin your set point is increased over here let's suppose say this is 104 fahrenheit and your normal temperature is this one that is 98 so your set point is increased it means your body would do now something to increase this temperature from 98 to 104 so the body would try to produce more heat in order to gain that much temperature so what will the body do there will be decrease decrease sweating because sweating causes what sweating decrease your body temperature over here we are we we need increase in body temperature so the sweating is decreased the shivering is increased why because the shivering it uh, uses atp and it produces heat the shivering is increased there is cutaneous vasoconstriction why because the blood flow to the skin is decreased if the blood flow to the skin is decreased it means the temperature coming to the surface is decreased it means that the the temp the heat loss by body is decreased so there is increase in vasoconstriction so now focus on the mcq temperature increase above the set point it means your set point is increased what will decrease showering it will increase we studied right now because we need more heat vasoconstriction it will increase because we we do not want our heat to be lost so there will be decreased heat carried to the surface of the skin so the vasoconstriction actually causes what it carries less blood to the surface of the skin if it carries less blood to the surface of the skin it so the, the temperature loss from the skin is less is less but what happened to the sweating sweating is actually decreased sweating is decreased so do not confuse yourself it is not temperature increases it is temperature increases above the set point so keep in mind regarding this coming to our next the dead space does not change in focus on this mcq the dead space does not change in now deep breathing in the deep breathing what happens let's suppose this is your lung these are two lungs now if there are 100 alveoli normally 50 are working the 50 alveoli are work working in the normal tidal volume now when you uh, inhale deeply what happens your other 50 alveoli opens too but there is no blood flow to the other 50 alveoli keep in mind if this is your lung you are having 100 alveoli out of the 100 alveoli 50 alveoli are working the 50 are not working but if, if you inspire deeply what happens your 50 alveoli they always they also opens up when they opens up the other 50 alveoli but there is no blood coming to them so what happened there is no exchange but the amount of air there does not participate in the exchange they increases so it increases the dead space it increases the dead space i would increase i will uh, share the references i am not talking on my own and it increases which dead space it increases anatomical dead space more as compared to the uh, alveolar dead space because let's suppose this is from from the nozzle cavity the dead space consists of what the dead space the dead space is equal to anatomical dead space plus alveolar dead space this is the 2a so the normal dead space the, the dead space is called physiological dead space so the physiological dead space the physiological dead space is equal to anatomical dead space plus alveolar dead space now the anatomical dead space is up to which area this is another mcq this is up to terminal bronchiole this is up to the terminal bronchiole you have to keep this in mind this is another mcq the anatomical dead space is up to which area it is not up to alveoli it is not up to the respiratory bronchiole it is up to terminal bronchiole point number one point number two normally in a normal person anatomical dead space uh, anatomical dead space is equal to physiological dead space the total dead space is actually the 
anatomical dead space the alveolar dead space occurs in the pathological condition in the pathological condition so in a, in a deep breathing this is if you are if you are, these are the passages and this is your lung one lung and this is the other lung what happen these alveoli dis, uh, these airway distend the trachea down up to the terminal bronchiole there is distension in deep breathing so there is actually increase in anatomical dead space in case of uh, deep breathing in case of deep breathing now uh, uh, while in case of deep breathing the alveolar ventilation also increases now you have to keep this thing in mind let's suppose this is your alveoli so the amount of air that is refreshed in the alveoli so in deep breathing the amount of air is refreshed so what happens the alveolar ventilation it increases the alveolar ventilation it increases also the dead space increases tidal volume increases so the dead, dead, dead space increase in deep breathing what happens in shallow breathing uh, i will share the reference for it too in shallow breathing what happens let's suppose this is your airway this is these these are the lungs and these are alveoli in shallow breathing you are exchanging you are exchanging the airway you are exchanging the air in the upper airway CO2 comes out, oxygen goes in, CO2 comes But what happens in the lower airway? There is no exchange of gas. If there is no exchange of gas, what happens? All the oxygen is used by the body and all CO2 is produced. So, do you think after some time, this, this air can take part in exchange? No. And what is the definition of that space? The amount of air that does not participate in the gaseous exchange. So it means if there is amount of air that is not taking part in the gaseous exchange, so it means there is a massive increase in dead space in case of shallow breathing. But it mainly increases the alveolar dead space. Keep in mind, the anatomical dead space, the 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 deep breathing, the deep inspiration, it actually increases both anatomical dead space plus alveolar dead space. But the anatomical dead space is more as compared to the alveolar dead space. In case of shallow breathing, the alveolar dead space is increased. The alveolar dead space is increased, and the alveolar ventilation is decreased. Keep these things. The, my every word is an MC. Keep, keep this in mind. In shallow breathing, the alveolar ventilation is decreased. The alveolar dead space is increased. Coming next. In supine position, the dead space goes down. In tracheostomy, the dead space goes down. In recombinant position, the dead space is unchanged. The dead space is unchanged. The dead space is un now coming toward the references. And uh, this is the most reliable reference. The anatomical dead space, uh, it here increased dead space. The anatomical dead space, it is increased in the short shallow breathing. In the shallow breathing, the dead space is increased. In a shallow breathing, the dead space is increased. And I explained the mechanism because of decreased alveolar hypoventilation. If your alveolar hypoventil if your al alveolar ventilation is decreased, if your alveolar ventilation is decreased, the air in the alveoli that does not take part in the gaseous exchange. And there is increase in the amount of air that does not take part in exchange. So it means there is increase in a dead space. Now coming toward the second reference. Now this is my second reference. This is one of the Indian book which has compiled all the Ginang, the Gaitan and all this stuff. Now what you see, factors that increasing anatomical dead space, the deep inspiration. So the deep inspiration, it increases the anatomical dead space. Now also keep in mind the other things. Anticholinergic drugs, it increases the dead space. Positive pressure ventilation, it increases the dead space. Neck extension and jaw protrusion, increases the dead space. Over here, the neck extended and jaw protruded increased dead space, dead space by this much normal position is 119. Next flexed and chin depressed that is 73 ml. Normal is 150 ml. Now compare with that, that is decreased, decreased, and decreased. <coughs> Overall, that is increased. So factor that increases in anatomical dead space, you you have to focus on these things. You must rationalize these things because. Uh, they 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 can actually con uh, confuse you so it means the dead space is increased in this condition now in posture in the upright position you are having the highest dead space in the sitting position the dead space is again increased as compared to the semi reclining semi reclining mean the person is lying in the bed but the shoulders are elevated and the thighs are at right angle 
to the abdomen so in the rec uh, semi reclining position and the supine position so you compare all the three mm, all three settings in the sitting it is more in a semi reclining it is decreased as compared to the sitting in a supine it is decreased more so in supine position your dead space goes down in supine position the dead space goes down coming next with age increase in dead space because there is uh, amount of air that increase in the lung that does not take uh, part in gaseous exchange anesthesia apparatus circuit artificial airway hyperventilation now this is again hyperventilation so that is uh, increase that is shallow breathing again the shallow breathing increase this now coming forward posture focus on this less in the supine than in the upright position so in the upright position your dead space is increased in supine position it is decreased but what happens in the lateral position in the lateral position during spontaneous respiration the greater part of ventilation is also distributed to the lower lung and there is probably little change in the lower dead space now this is the only position in which there is no change in the dead space but if the person is ventilated artificially now if you say if the question say the person is lying in a recumbent position but you are going to uh, give rescue breathing or you are going to give him artificial breaths then the dead space will increase the only condition over here in which the uh, the only condition over here in which the dead space is not changed in the is the lateral position or the recombinant position so i think this mystery is uh, solved as well thank you for watching